This is a mini PC made by one of the most popular system board manufacturers. It comes with a whole lot of great specs, but does it live up to the hype? Let's see specs! Hey everybody, very good to meet you. I'm Michael, the Tech Mishka, and this is what we're reviewing today. I gotta be careful because it's apparently turned on. Mini computer by Gigabyte. Uh, there are a few things that make it stand out, which we are going to discuss throughout the process of this video. Uh, first of all, it comes from Gigabyte, one of the most reputable companies about manufacturing system boards, has special focus on security and has been quite a journey because when I got it, it was without an operating system. So in this video, I'm going to guide you through everything. Set up an installation, uh, a lot of benchmarks, gaming tests, uh, figuring out how much heat it can produce. We're going to talk about the cooling system, measure the levels, basically everything that you need to know before getting this particular model or getting yourself another sort of mini PC. Let's get started. Performance testing comes first, and I will apparently combine this part with gaming testing as well, because it's what anyways is the most demanding thing that people usually ask about. Now, keep in mind that the 8840U, the processor inside, can go as much as 30 watts TDP, which is comparable to the latest M4 Silicon by Apple, and is already a processor well appreciated in the gaming forums, especially if power consumption is a priority. The real deal about this APU is the Radeon 780M, it's the graphics, which sort of changed the game with mobile x86 processors in the past few years, because it makes it possible for mini computers and laptops without any dedicated GPUs to be gaming ready. And when I say gaming ready, this totally is the case with this BRICS model. The frames per second on Counter-Strike that you see here is real, achievable in 1080p mode and super stable. No sign of overheating or throttling. If we get to try other games, the situation is gonna be similar. And no, this is not a high-end gaming station, but with some smart optimizations, you're gonna be able to run a lot, really a lot of titles with reasonably good experience. Which means that doubts related to efficiency with audio, photo, even video editing softwares is out of question, so you're going to run fine and in most cases way better than what you'd expect from a computer without a dedicated high-end GPU. Sure, the video encoding is going to be a little slower than a tweaked desktop PC, but the power efficiency is hard to beat, right? And here's a big bonus, if you use the USB 4.0 port, you can run eGPU setups such as the Razer Core series here, and this is going to add additional boost to your gaming and video experience. Now, if you wonder about typical use cases with this computer, we've just highlighted some of them, but you can also think of entertainment center, smart home control hub, productivity station, a dedicated office workstation, whatever you can make a Windows or Linux distribution to do in order to serve you well, the Gigabyte BER7 is going to deliver. Part of the magic hides in the very efficient design. The box is quite exciting, helping you to quickly get up to speed with the most important specs and features and figure out how and what to utilize. There's a total of seven USB ports, that's wow, up to four displays in UHD resolution can work with this model. And yet, dimensions are so typical and well-fitting within the title Mini PC. It's mostly plastic, with design allowing optimal airflow, access to the internal components and potential upgrades possible as well. Inside the pack you're going to find a VESA mount bracket, so that the computer can be placed behind your monitor. A very functional idea, as you can guess. The rest of the technical specs are also something to be excited about. Besides the excellent CPU and the Radeon 780M graphics, you can beef it up with up to 96 gigs of DDR5 RAM, use a fast storage module, there's inbuilt Bluetooth, Wi-Fi 6E, there's a TPM 2.0 security module, Kensington lock, 2.5 gigabit LAN and variety of options to connect displays. And you can of course run an operating system of your choice. So the specs sound really good, but I want us to discuss them. So let me put it on top of the Mac Mini, so we can take a look at it and talk about the hardware inside. Clarification about the APU. This is a Ryzen 7 by AMD 8840U. And the U indicates that this is not the top of the line configuration for this processor. Um, I would say the HS or HX series might be 
just a little bit faster. This one has the same TDP, potentially the same peak performance. However, it can maintain it for shorter periods of time, which in my opinion, is not going to hinder the overall performance, or if it does, that's gonna be rather insignificantly. We have configuration choices with or without RAM, with or without internal storage, and gigabytes uh, make you do the installation of the operating system by yourself, which if you go for the Windows way, is super simple. Just go to Microsoft's website, download the bootable media creator, download the necessary files in order to create a bootable flash drive, boot from it, follow the instructions, and within less than 30 minutes, you are going to have your Windows up and running. And the big benefit, you would know for sure that this is a clean installation, safety, unlike what we might get with some other, a bit shadier brands. Speaking of security, uh, this device is equipped with TPM 2.0 module, which can be a game changer, especially if you have to choose a mini computer for your office environment. And of course, the system board, which is made by Gigabyte, seems to be very nicely designed. And I wanna show you what are the options to perform repairs and potential upgrades. Gigabytes make it quite easy for us by explaining in details what is accessible. Furthermore, there is a very detailed graphics showcasing the internal layout. Of course, nothing better than the hands-on experience, but don't forget that there might be some hidden traps, so don't underestimate the ESD danger as a starter. And if you haven't done this before, better practice with a full-size desktop PC first. So, we can see an easy way to get to the RAM. Here, I got it with Transcend modules, which are used. As stated, two DIMMs of 48 gigabytes each are supported as maximum configuration. As for the NVMe, it's a four-lane PCI Express Generation 4 slot, and a lot of good drives are going to fit in. I'm quite happy with the performance of the standard module used, which is luckily TLC-based NAND and shows excellent sustained performance. Good news is the access to other components, such as the Wi-Fi module 2, and with some more patience, you can get to the cooling fan and the processor with its heatsink on the other side, something due to the potential risk of bringing in some damages I won't do right now. But as a summary, we can praise the excellent utilization of the space, the easy access to various system board areas, and to be somewhat sorry that there is no secondary M2 slot, because your only easy way to add external storage is to use USB based drive, kind of the Mac Mini way. This fact doesn't make the overall connectivity experience poor, though, because you can count on really a lot of ports. While utilizing the BER7 as a router won't be an easy task due to the availability of just one LAN port, you can count on more than the usual amount of connectivity options for such a small computer, and it's something I highly appreciate, especially the amount of ports on the front. Also, I'm quite certain that you're going to like to hear about the fan, and now you can listen to the worst case scenario where the system is loaded at 100% for more than 15 minutes. I've had this mini PC for two weeks running as a secondary computer, doing various supporting tasks, and it has always been quieter than both my editing station and my laptop. A quick check on the BIOS reveals an easy way to monitor the hardware and apply some configuration changes. From what I see, there is no way to change the CPU TDP. However, you could control the behavior of the fan, and depending on where you have installed your computer at, you can make it quieter or a bit more aggressive. But enough praising. Let me see what kind of shortcomings I've stumbled across. Maybe the lack of dual LAN port setup is worth mentioning. The lack of second M2 slot as well. No Oculink support is present. You are expected to install the operating system on your own. And this time around, I feel that the power supply cable pops out kind of too easily. Bottom line, I feel that the BRICS BER7 especially with this configuration running Ryzen 7 8840U, it's a very safe choice to make because of all the focus around security with this particular model. The fact that the 8840U delivers fantastic performance, the fact that you can upgrade the RAM up to 96 gigs and you can put a storage module of your own choice, plus you have really a lot of good connectivity options. Given the price point, I think that's a very exciting mini computer you can buy right now. Do you agree or not? Would you go for this particular Gigabyte model or you have others? 
which you favor a bit more? We can talk about all of this in the comment section below the video. And thanks a lot for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it thus far, please consider subscribing to the channel for more cool tech inspections. And I, Michael, the Tech Mishka, wish you a fantastic day. Bye.